Hi right there, everybody. Welcome. My name's Scott Meyer. This is Drawing Together with Artist Network, where we meet every Wednesday at 3 p.m. Eastern to draw together. So I want to shout out to everybody. It's good to see you all here. So many familiar names. Um, this has been awesome that we all get to do this. Uh, so uh, this is what we're working on today. This is a photo of from the Grand Canyon. Of course, not capturing the full grandeur of the canyon, but it's, it's a start. It gets us going. So, um, and this was really fun uh, to work on, uh, you know, really trying to capture the sense of light, the texture, um, and kind of keeping with the theme we've been focusing on lately. It's, um, you know, it's really about how to maximize the, the materials to suggest details as much as possible, right? So that you don't get overwhelmed by all of this stuff. You know, I think that can sometimes inhibit people from drawing as it feels like it's just too much to take on. But the more we practice drawing, uh, the more comfortable we are with our, our tools, uh, the, the less we get intimidated by those things. You know, we realize that we can, we can suggest and, um, and, and just kind of embrace the, the materials, uh, embrace the subject, um, and not get bogged down in the details if we don't want to. So it kind of puts us in the driver's seat when, with regards to detail, and you can decide for yourself how much you want to add or, or not. So um, that's what we're working on today. Um, you'll find a link at the top of the, the chat for uh, where you can share your work. So if you're drawing along with us, um, then, you know, love to see what you're all working on. The whale, a lot of really awesome drawings there from the whale from one of the previous episodes. So if you haven't watched that, check that out. Um, this does go up as a recording after the live event. So um, if you just want to sit back and watch and then follow along later, you can do that. Or if you happen to come on a little bit late and you have no idea what's going on, welcome. Um, and you can kind of sit back and watch. So if you have any questions, feel free to type it out. Uh, if you type it in all caps, I'm more likely to see it. So I do my best to try to monitor the, the discussion to see if there are any relevant questions or important questions. Um, if, if it looks like I've skipped over something, um, please be sure to just kind of type it out again. Sometimes I just, sometimes I lose it while I'm, I'm doing all this stuff together. So um, Materials, I, I chose to work with graphite today. So this is a smooth drawing paper. It's about a nine by 12, about the same size as a reference image, which you can find in the description below. So um, bring that up. You can see that right below me here on the screen, a small version of that. But if you want the full size one, you, you can find that in the description. Um, this Again, this is just a smooth drawing paper. I believe this is the Hanamula, um, but pretty much any smooth white drawing paper will work. You can really use any material you want. So that's the kind of the point of this show is that we draw together, but we get to kind of explore different ways of, of working um, and kind of following your own, your own impulses. Um, materials, I chose to work with a range of graphite uh, pencils here. So starting off with the F as a lighter one, um, we have then the 4B uh, for kind of a mid to dark. And then um, I have this Derwent Onyx, which is really dark. Um, and that's my, my dark. So that gives me kind of a full range and it's a little bit darker than I might otherwise work with just for the sake of the camera. Um, and so, but if in, in general, you don't necessarily have to be working with the exact same pencils. There's really not a huge difference between, you know, an F and an H uh, you know, or something like that. So um, what I try to do is I try to select something from kind of a hard, middle and soft range in the graphites. And then if you're in that range, you're going to be okay, unless you're really, um, unless you're really controlling your drawing and you have a kind of a, um, you know, a, a kind of a distinct method that uses that full range where you move um, from one pencil to the next to, in order to achieve your values. I just, I try to keep it simple. That's just the way my brain works. And I like to use pressure to control the values as much as possible. But the range of values, um, the range of pencils gets you kind of a, a jumping off point in terms of controlling those values. So we'll get onto that. Um, let's see. Welcome everybody. I'm just seeing, I don't see any uh, questions coming up. So we're gonna dig right into it. Now, I'm trying something new for this, this episode um, where I'm going to kind of walk you through my process. As I mentioned, I'm, I'm in the process of working on a, a book right now. One of the things that I'm doing is um, kind of manipulating reference images to help guide us through the, uh, 
these projects. And so the first step when we talk about it a lot is to blur your eyes so you get rid of all those details and you try to simplify the shapes. And a lot of that happens, you know, in the mind, right? And so with the, what I did is I just changed the reference image to try to simulate what I'm seeing. And of course, I also got rid of the, the saturation, so now it's grayscale, to help us really kind of lock on to those initial values. Um, but this will help to kind of visualize some of these early steps and so I think it's really helpful to start with kind of a, an initial gesture. Uh, just getting a little bit of information on the page, just getting yourself a, a jumping off point. Um, and it's really hard to see this, but I don't wanna, it's a, it's a light um, material. So this is the F pencil. And I don't want to, um, I don't want to adjust the exposure too much. So I'm going to try to get to kind of darker values quickly. So um, I got kind of thinking ahead to people joining this or watching this later and they're like, is he even doing anything on the paper? <laughs> I am. So, um, all right. So, but what I'm, what I'm trying to do here is what this, again, what I kind of see in the, what you see in the thumbnail below is the simulation of what I'm trying to visualize in my mind while we're looking at the reference image. So blurring your vision, but like I said, I, I kind of, I'm also uh, lowering the saturation and trying to interpret the basic values and the basic shapes. Um, and then by um, kind of knocking this in quickly, getting initial attempt, we can then go through and correct. Um, I was talking to my son about this the other day about drawing and, and how so much of drawing really is it, it's, it's just refining the gesture. Like you're starting with these initial marks and then the whole process is going through those steps and um, going through those initial marks and just refining them. And then we each have our own kind of uh, sensibility with, with regards to, you know, how far you refine those, you know, so some artists will stick with the, um, stick with that initial gesture um, and kind of keep that freshness and others will move from that gesture into something that is more um, kind of hyper-realistic, photorealistic. But um, in, in, es in essence, so much of the, the drawing uh, issues are presented in those initial gestures. And so um, that's the way I kind of visualize the drawing process. It's like I said, start with a gesture, get your reaction on the page, and then you go through a set of steps and decisions that refine those marks. There's something in that initial impulse that I think is really um, critical in terms of, um, you know, kind of capturing that, that experience. And of course, we're working from a photograph here, but one of the things we've, we've talked about here, this is all preparing for working from life. You know, ideally, you'll be able to get out on a, into a location like this and work from life, but um, it's not always possible, and there's still a lot you can learn from working from a photograph. So, so I'm just going to block in this kind of general shadow shape here. And what's kind of interesting is, yeah, you've got this, this shadow line that's creeping up from the bottom of the, the, the canyon wall here, um, and it kind of aligns with the edge of the scrub brush and uh, you know onto that that sheer cliff wall so it's kind of a nice uh, a nice division of that space there so in general i'm seeing a, about a division of a third a third a third so a third of the sky a third of that light on the cliff and then a third um, representing that shadow creeping up that wall but i haven't measured or made it very precise at this point just kind of Again, it's, uh, we talked about this before in the past, the, the, the idea that your drawing process aligns with the, the thought process and the revelations that happen in your mind about the subject. It takes a while to really discover all the nuances of the scene. And so the, the drawing process helps us to understand the subject better. And it, like I said, it just takes time. Um, and we want that drawing to unfold in that, that same manner that our understanding of the subject does. So with the um, F pencil that I've got, you know, it's fairly limited in terms of its value. So of course I'm not getting as rich of a value contrast as we're seeing in the thumbnail, 
But again, it's it's all about uh, kind of just giving us a little bit of a a, um, a leg up in terms of the, uh, the the overall shapes. Again, I'm kind of I'm looking at the subject. You know, pretty much my right now my eyes are all out of focus, and partly because I can see what you're seeing the screen where you have me on the screen and I don't look at like looking at myself. So I kind of like to let my eyes go out of focus and not get bogged down by my self consciousness. But um, that helps in the drawing process because I can just let the um, let the subject just be a set of shapes, values. And then from this gesture, like I said, we're going to continue to refine that. So I'm using this overhand grip on purpose because I, I don't want the tip of the pencil to affect the surface of the paper. Um, oh, Karen, I just saw your question here. Sometimes you tone the paper first. Why is it not needed in this drawing? It is. I, I was just going to shout that out. Um, but what I'm going to do is like I, I'm using this initial gesture as a way to just start to get tone on the page and then I'm going to wipe this down and knock down some of that white soften those edges and and then maybe lay that lay more tone down so that was a, that was a really good observation there and I'm glad you called that out because uh, I was just I was just thinking about that I was I, I, um, in kind of my preparatory thoughts I had kind of made a mental note to mention that and then I've completely spaced it so thank you for that um, let's see see some interesting good stories being shared about the uh, experiences here. You know, I live out west here in Colorado and I haven't been to the Grand Canyon, which I would like to at some point, but we have, uh, you know, other canyon lands in the area that are somewhat similar. So, um, all right. So again, like I, I, I use this paper towel, kind of wipe this down. It's building up this haze. I'm knocking down the intensity of the white of the paper. And then I can come back in and start to establish some of the forms again. Oh, you know, I forgot to mention I have, um, I need to use, where's my, my blending stump? I'll grab this one. Nope, I think I'm gonna need a new one. Ah, I found an old one. This one had, has charcoal or a graphite on it. The other ones that I've had had charcoal on it, but I got a blending stump here. We'll use that to be working with. And I forgot to mention the erasers that I'm working with. Um, I have my rubber, I mean, my kneaded eraser, and then I have my rubber eraser, this retractable one from Derwent that I like so much. And this is a, another Derwent eraser, rubber one that, just a slim one that we'll be using. And um, we'll get into that a little bit later, but those erasers will then help to establish the highlights. So now that we have this kind of ghostly image there, um, we can kind of go through and start to refine um, things and take kind of the next step. We're going to take, you know, about a hundred steps to get to the final refinement of this, um, scene here. Um, but what I like to do is, um, as Karen kind of called out, kind of tone the paper first, uh, and that requires laying down material. And I figure, well, since I need to lay down material, I need to lay down some, some graphite, I might as well use that as an opportunity to start thinking through the composition, start thinking through the initial structure um, of this scene. And uh, what ends up happening is you end up drawing, you draw, end up drawing everything numerous times. And that's where you get to the real depth in the drawing is by, you know, approaching it multiple times. And so I'm just kind of thinking through some of the the basic shapes for the clouds here. And with the, um, the kind of the faint image from that initial pass, I can see where I was a little bit off and I can start to make some adjustments there. Uh, and this next pass is not gonna be, again, 100% correct, but it'll be closer. And then we're gonna take another pass and we'll refine it even farther. Um, and so what I'm looking at right now, this is going to be really kind of tricky in here where we have this tangent. We have those clouds in the background aligning with the top of the, the cliff here. 
um, but we have a distinct value contrast that we can utilize. And as I work on this background, you can see these kind of bands of color, but if you squint your eyes, there's a fairly subtle value shift there. Um, and this bank of clouds back here is, is kind of tricky. I have to make a decision in my, do I think of it as part of the sky or do I think about it as part of this larger shadow shape, kind of like I've done here. Um, I don't know as if, I've, if I have that kind of decided at this point, so, but I'm just kind of thinking through what, um, what I'm, in this initial step, I'm trying to anticipate um, what's going to give me some uh, trouble later on. And that's going to be that's going to be one of the areas where I'll have to make a decision about that about that value on the cloud bank back there. All right, so there's a little bit more refinement. Let me wipe this down. And what's nice is that this graphite then is building up on the page, and I'll be able to erase out some of the highlights that you, like you see on the clouds there. Um, showing up well. I'm actually going to jump to the four B so I can get a little bit more contrast down in here. Um, so again, using the side of the pencil, it gives me this nice broad um, stroke that allows me to cover the space uh, a little bit more quickly than if I were to use the, the point of the pencil, the tip of the pencil. So I think a lot of this drawing is actually going to be um, completed using this 4B. So it's relatively soft. Um, I like how that's building up those values there. And I want to give some sort of value to that rock face. And I'm going to, I'm kind of intentionally using a a horizontal mark and I have to kind of contort myself because I can't rotate the paper um, but it I, I mean ultimately I want those marks to disappear but if they're visible at all it's going to be helpful to have a vertical nature to them because it will help just to reinforce that plane of the um, of the rocks there so that's what I'm that's why I'm doing that instead of this horizontal one uh, I want that contrast there's already such a horizontal pull to the shape I want to contrast that with these kind of vertical marks. So this is all just kind of building up value to try to kind of simulate that, that thumbnail that's below us, um, kind of shedding any of that detail um, that, like I said, that, that's something that happens more in the mind, so I'm just trying to help kind of show what, what we think about it. And, and this is a great opportunity. I'd love to hear how you all, I don't know, how do you feel about it? You know, how do you approach the drawing and anything that you share in these early, that you can share about these early stages that you found that works for you or areas that you might struggle? Um, So I'm gonna again just get material down uh, on the page. I'm gonna and what I one of the other kind of advantages to wiping down the drawing with that paper towel is that it it does help to unify the marks. And we've talked about that before. If you're new, uh, you wouldn't have heard me say this, but it you know so much of art making is about balancing variety and unity. You know, as we the more stuff you have on your drawing, the more contrast, the more uh, more variety you have, um, it's exciting, but it can also make things feel segmented to some degree. Um, and it can, can be a little bit visually confusing if it's, if it's too much. Um, and, but it, so we're trying to balance that with unity, with unity, the idea of everything belonging together, um, which leads to a sense of harmony but could also be boring. <laughs> you, know, we, you know, so you're trying to balance those two and that's the way I kind of view that with these initial marks too, is like each mark we make on there becomes visible. You kind of wipe it down to help unify them and then you pull out more contrast and you wipe it down to unify and you're kind of trying to find that balance in between. Um, oh, am I getting in the way of the, 
Am I getting in the way of the shot? I hope not. Um, is everybody able to see everything? Looks like everything's coming up clearly, but um, if we're noticing any technical issues, let me know. Um, sounds like Valerie's having a hard time seeing the drawing, so. Um, I'm trying to see, everything seems to be, I'm looking at, it looks like there are some people having a hard time seeing the work. And so I, I just want to kind of take a moment. I'm just kind of checking. Everything seems to be clear on, on this end. It says I've got a good connection here. Um, I'm just going to take a little pause here. And then see if that affects anything. Um, so, but hopefully, uh, you know, hopefully everybody can see it. I'm not sure what is go what's going on here. Um, I know it. it I, I hope it's not just the fact that it, it looks blurry. Like by wiping it down, this whole the image itself is pretty blurry. <laughs> um, so hopefully that's it. Um, if I bring this up, does it is it clear for everybody? This is the initial drawing. Um, like I said, everything looks sharp on my end, so I just want to see if there's anything I can adjust. Um, okay, yeah, Penny's saying it seems to happen as he's using his pencil shading and then clears when he stops shading. Interesting, okay. Um, all right, I'm just gonna keep going. Uh, let me know if that, if that, Initial drawing there looks clear and sharp, and then we know that the image is clear. Okay. That's kind of the, I guess the nature of live video is one of those things that we have to contend with. Um, but I will do my best to, to adjust. Um, and I'm in, so I'm using my, this overhand grip here uh, as I'm kind of blocking in some of the, the shadow forms here. Um, and I want to use that side of the pencil because I want to see them as shape. I want to be careful not to outline those shadow shapes because that can kind of fracture the drawing a bit. It can create a bit too much contrast and then it makes it visually confusing. All right. Um, I think we're at the, the stage right now where I can start to correct the proportions a little bit. And so what I did here is I, um, let's see, actually I'll put that back. So I, you know, I've got these red lines here and this, these are the lines that I'm going to kind of focus on to help me wrangle my proportions a bit. And I'll actually drop them onto the page. I'll level that out. Um, And so what I'm trying to do at this stage is, you know, I have that initial drawing in, but I need to, right now I'm just focusing on those lines and seeing how they relate to one another. And you can use some actual angle sighting. So hold your pencil up, close one eye, align it with one of the lines there in the reference image, and then bring that over and compare it to your drawing. Um, and I'm trying to really let the line work guide and not adjust them to the initial drawing. I want to, this is allowing me to correct things. And um, so I want it to be kind of somewhat unbiased by that initial drawing as much as possible. So just looking at the spacing between things, where they intersect is also a, a really key feature, you know, something that we, it's really important to lock down is where lines intersect. I feel like this can be brought up this line here, which would suggest the, the shading in here could come up to. And one of the things I noticed in doing the preparatory one, we have these two shadows here that are very similar to one another. And so the the goal is to try to see their differences as much as possible. All right, 
go. That's so looking at the proportions, I feel like that's it's working out for me. Looking at the relationship between these two lines here. And then by raising this, it adjusts this shape a little bit. So I'm switching back and forth between thinking about this shape, this line, and then this shape here. Move that line over now to adjust to that. And if that feels pretty good, I think I can move on to the next, kind of the next step. So it starts with this gesture, um, and then you apply some um, sight measuring, angle sighting, and you kind of try to just get the main proportions correct. And if you have that, then you can start to really focus on the details, which is, which can be really exciting. So. And then I want, so I want to evaluate this. So I have that actually, it looks like it's exactly the same height. And then it's a little, the sky is a little bit higher. So let me double check that against the, the reference. It looks like it's pretty, it looks like it aligns pretty well with the reference. So I'm gonna let that be, let those proportions be. And then now, That's interesting. I'm sorry that there are, um, sorry that there are some blurring issues here. So my camera is not on. There's no autofocus. It's all manually focused, and everything looks clear on my end. So um, I'm sorry to, but I know that can be frustrating. So hopefully it works itself out. Uh, thank you, Romer. Um, Uh, Liz is saying using graphite sticks makes it easier. Yeah, I bet you can cover a lot of ground with a graphite stick. So, um, yeah, I don't know what is. I believe what I what I think is happening if it's out of focus is just a, it's a bandwidth issue, and it could be from my end. So streaming from my computer out, um, it's kind of lagging a little bit. So um, it could be too much video trying to push out. So then it's downscaling or, or blurring the, the video. Okay. So I'm just going to soften this again, being kind of gentle with it, um, but letting that build up. And I might need a little bit of tone air in the sky. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to start to work on the sky. Um, I'm going to switch back to the F pencil, so it's all fairly light. And I'm going to kind of start at the top of the sky and kind of work my way down. And then actually I can get rid of, I'm gonna get rid of those lines on that reference image below, but I'm gonna keep the grayscale. Um, I don't wanna get bogged down in the details quite yet. So I just wanna to continue to build up tone. The sky is an area that's really always trips me up, even when I'm out there painting. Um, it's, um, what, you know, especially with painting, when you, when you have the ability to control color to some degree, it can be really tricky um, and confusing with regards to hue, value, and saturation. When you're looking at the sky, the sky is just full of light, and there's a natural tendency to want to make things lighter in value than they actually are. Um, and then it's when you increase that saturation of the color, um, it can create a, a stimulant a stimulating effect that that feels like it's a lightning in value. So if you look at like a bright yellow, for example, it is a light value, it's something that's light in value, but it's also highly saturated. Um, and that saturation can be really confusing sometimes. It can it can be confused for value. Um, and so my what I'm what I'm kind of getting at, I guess, is to go darker than you might feel <laughs> comfortable with. And to kind of trust that as you as you go darker in tone, it'll continue to read. But I look at that sky and I'm like, oh, that's a pretty bright sky. That light on the cliff is pretty light, um, but it's not the pure white. I don't have to preserve the white of the page. And then oh, and my hope is that it'll lead to a richer value experience to actually build tone on the on the page.
Uh, Samin is asking, I see you're smudging um, the pencil marks with the tissue paper. Have you tried using graphite powder? So could you refer to which pencils being used? So this is the, the F that I'm using right now. So I've switched back to the harder pencil um, just because I don't need that full value range in the sky. Um, I have used graphite powder um, and I think it can be really helpful. Um, I it's just, I guess I don't, I don't really have a reason why I don't. <laughs> it's just something that I, I used it and it didn't click with me. Um, but it can make a really nice smooth gradation, especially if you're using it um, in conjunction with a chamois that, you know, gives you a nice smooth, even tone. Um, you know, what, one of the things that can happen, and it, it happens with this process too, is like sometimes that smudging down, uh, you know, wiping down with a, a material can... Um, uh, it can kind of sink into any imperfection. So if there's any oils on the paper, any scratches, it can kind of get blotchy with that re to that regard. So I end up using a pencil um, to kind of smooth things out anyway. So I think I've just gotten used to just building up tone using a, a pencil. So I'm gonna build up that that sky, thinking about a just kind of a, a very um, kind of crude gradation, a little bit darker at the top and in the corners. And now I wanna, um, wanna kinda knock in those, those clouds a little bit. So I'm using, um, again, the side of the pencil. And when in doubt, use kind of a circular mark if you're not sure what direction to make those marks and I can apply a little bit more pressure now. You know, I know, I know with, this, with this H pencil, I'm not gonna get too dark. And one of the nice things about clouds is they're constantly changing and it's a little bit freeing <laughs> with regards to these. I don't have to match the proportions one-to-one. -one. It doesn't have to look exactly like it. Um, but one of the things that I'm doing as I'm um, building up these these darker areas here representing the shadows on the clouds is doing a quick check-in with some of the dark spots in the cliff to see if I've got uh, some you know general proportions that I'm getting the scale uh, roughly correct um, and then if you're if you're not sure about these shapes and how to make these shapes think about kind of starting from the center of the form working out to the edge so rather than drawing an outline and then trying to fill it in. Start from the center of the form and then bring your marks up to, to that edge. Um, and that helps to simulate the softness of those the clouds, right? And you can see how some of those edges just kind of disappear. And I found that when I when I try to start with an outline for a cloud, it gets really tricky <laughs> to, to then break up the edge and create the, the necessary edge variation to, uh, to really represent those clouds. I can move down to this one here. Um, and so, you know, we're looking at a ceiling in the sky, right? The, this cloud here at the top is closer to us, and then it's, over, it's closer to being over our heads than the ones along the horizon where we're looking out at them. So there's a bit of a perspective shift um, that can be helpful when uh, really kind of creating that sky. And if you think about the sky as being a ceiling, something that comes over your head all the way back rather than a wall, it can be sometimes helpful in um, really visualizing things like the clouds. Emmanuel, live from Ireland, give my cat Levi a shout out. I sure will, Levi. <laughs> shout out to you. That's awesome. Yeah, you guys are inspiring me to use graphite powder. I see that in the discussion there. That's awesome. I should do that. For a while, what I was doing is I was, as I was shaving my pencils to sharpen them, just to, I was keeping the, uh, um, keeping that powder as best I could and then using that. And, um, so I could start doing that or just order some powder. And so I'm kind of general. In general, I'm prior, prioritizing the horizontal marks here on these these clouds. But 
um, kind of shifting. I don't, I don't want the, the marks here to be too dominant. So I'm kind of blending a little bit with the, with the pencil here and kind of switching between a horizontal and um, circular mark. And I'm just thinking about the shadow shapes, and then we're gonna, I'm going to come back in and, and try to establish some of the, uh, the light there in the clouds. Um, and and this, it'd be interesting too, I'd be curious to see for you all, you know, what you, what, how do you think of the clouds compositionally? Is it something that you, you, know, you want to stick kind of uh, strictly to the size, the shape, the proportions? And for the your composition, or do you play around with it and move the clouds around to suit the composition? Um, and actually, I think what I'm going to do is actually build the sky. I'm going to work, keep working down to the horizon line. I want to smooth out this area here. Again, starting from the center of the form, primarily. And I'm going to go right over the edge of the of that cliff there. I'm not going to preserve that edge yet because I can I can sharpen that up later, and I want a clean overlap between those two as much as possible. And then I can smooth this out a little bit. And as I'm as I'm working in this area, I'm seeing you know these these blotchy areas here that I can start to address. I want to smooth those out a little bit. So um, if you're at that point where you want to smooth out, you know, what I'm doing is targeting the light spots between the dark areas. So if you, if you identify the dark areas, you see kind of a lightness between them, kind of target those lighter areas, try to fill them in a little bit. And then when you smudge it out, it's going to lift up some of the material. It's going to lighten it back up, but it should be kind of a smoother transition. You know, it's a question that I've received a lot is like, well, how, do you, how do you get rid of the, the marks? This is one of the ways to do it is just to, like I said, target the light areas between them, fill them in. And if it's too dark, you can lift with the kneaded eraser. And then... Uh, and do some feathering marks to unify everything, kind of fill in the spaces, fill in the spaces and then smooth them out. All right. Aditya, the tissue paper is one of the, <laughs> it's one of the important tools. It is, I use it a lot to draw with. Uh, I do that with painting too. Um, just use a paper towel. All right. And then, you know, looking at this now, I'm just kind of anticipating this is all going to go darker, um, but I'm focusing kind of on the sky area right now, so I'm not too concerned with that. Um, again, going right over the edge of that cliff. As long as I know where the rough line is for that cliff, I'll be in good shape, and I'll refine that a little bit later. All right. So if I use, let's switch to the uh, blending stump. I'm going to pull that out and um, start to kind of render the clouds a little bit. Use, again, using the side of the, the blending stump. Um, kind of going through and adding a little bit more um, kind of precision to the forms here. But again, I don't want to be thinking about it in terms of line. As they come across here, again, just thinking about the shapes, maybe, maybe just making them a little bit more precise now. But I don't want this to be actually too detailed at the expense of the, the cliff there. So um, again, this, when, when it comes down to detail, hopefully this process kind of puts you in the driver's seat um, with regards to that. And so what I might do is work the sky up to a certain degree, complete the rest of the drawing, and then if I need to add more detail, I can kind of go back and rework those areas. Um, but if I hold back on the details just a little bit at this stage, 
you know, to kind of give myself a, you know, a, a decent representation. Um, and then I move to the, the cliffs and I finish this up, then I can decide how much contrast I want in detail between, be, between them. If I really load up the details in the sky, it kind of forces me to e do even more in the cliff um, because that's, that's really the, the subject of this drawing is that cliff side. Um, so I just want something that, that doesn't feel unfinished but perhaps doesn't quite have a high level of detail. And so with this mark with the, with the blending stump, um, you know, again, I'm using the side of it and there's a, this contrast between the kind of more of a horizontal pull here to create a, a plane on the cloud that hopefully moves back in space and then dragging down and lifting into that sky to create that look. You can see along that edge, there's that soft edge where the little bits of the cloud kind of drop down And if I'm happy with that, then what I'm going to do is pull out this eraser here and do some negative drawing. So now I'll target the highlights in the clouds. And keep, I'm kind of thinking similarly to how I, I thought of the dark shapes, kind of thinking about the center of those forms and working my way up to the edge. And, I, and rather than creating a, an outline, um, really trying to just nail that shape. But it's interesting to see that that calibration that's happening is my mind was still vi visualizing this as light, as white. Um, but when I race out and you realize, oh my gosh, that's great, it changes this value. We are constantly fighting that, that calibration that's happening in our mind as we adjust to the, the values. really want just kind of natural looking marks rather than things that are too controlled because these are these are clouds so they're constantly changing how's everybody doing everybody following along everybody just sitting back and watching I know some of you just prefer to watch and then like I said you'll do the drawing a little bit later It's all good, however it is. And so with this eraser, um, you know, we, we've talked about that. It's one of the mantras of this class, right, is that you're always contributing to the form. When you have a blending stump, you have an eraser, you have a pencil, they're all opportunities to contribute to the form. And it can sometimes, we forget that with an eraser. We think of the eraser as a correction tool or the blending stump as a, you know, as a way to just smooth out texture. Um, but it's always an opportunity to contribute to the form and you're, you're drawing with it. Um, I kind of like the subtlety in that sky. I'm gonna generally leave that there. Um, Let's see, Colleen is saying, my, your 4B is too dark. That's interesting. Yeah, this, it's a little bit confusing with this, with the camera, with the lights here, you know, the exposure levels and such that we're managing. Um, it, what you're seeing on the screen isn't a great, it's an 100% accurate representation of what I'm seeing here. Um, and so you, it, hopefully you're just kind of experimenting with the materials to see what works. Um, But I'm, yeah, I'm just kind of catching that light across that horizon there. I'm just lightly lifting with this material. And actually what I want to do is I'm just using the weight of the eraser here to lift off some of the material. Actually, what if I just use my kneaded eraser? Kind of pick up some of that light along the horizon as you see that, that sky gradient. It's one of my favorite things in landscape paintings is this gradient from the, the horizon <laughs> to the, up, up, as you move up the sky there is just seeing the value, hue, saturation shifts. Um, it's, I love it. Um, Cause it's constantly changing. 
especially in the late afternoon here in Colorado, uh, when you look out to the east on the, towards the plains, the, as the sun sets, it drops behind the mountains with the sky so illuminated and you see this earth shadow along the horizon. It's the coolest thing. Um, never get tired of seeing that. So just kind of pulling up some of that light there, smooth things out, make it more atmospheric. But I'm feeling pretty good about that. Um, and I might kind of build up a little bit more value here, a little bit more value on the, the cliffs. Um, you can see that it, it is, um, if you have the original reference image open, again, that the link is in the description. Um, if you have that open and then you compare it to this, this blurred black and white version below me, um, you can see how by converting it to grayscale like this, it, that, that light on the side of the cliff, it feels very different. You know, you, I look at it and it's the, the, the original photo and it's so bright. Um, and it feels so light, but then when you when you lower that saturation, you realize that it's actually darker in value than it may it may feel. And again, that's the effect of saturation that can be so difficult. So I want to. I'm kind of forcing my myself to go even darker than I feel comfortable. Like right now, I'm like, this is that's way too dark. <laughs> you know, this is supposed to be light, but uh, it's. I gotta, I'm gonna trust it and force it to go even darker. All right, and then now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set aside the, a, the F pencil. I'm gonna move back to the 4B and I'm gonna work on this space here. Um, let me see, I just wanna check to see if there's any questions. Um, Lynn is asking, is that a battery operated eraser? This is not, I have one somewhere, but it's not working at the moment. So I just have this, this retractable one here. Um, JC saying, I just grabbed graphite powder, a brush and an apron. Awesome. Can't wait to see it. And then Samina saying, I tried to sharpen my charcoal pencil, broke them on the first try. Oh, I know that. <laughs> feeling it's so horrible when it just kind of keeps breaking and breaking and breaking um you know so sometimes i will just use a, a pencil sharpener for the charcoal but I, I try to actually have one that's dedicated to charcoal um and and i'll use that if i if i get to that that's that same spot where it just is breaking i'm i'm sorry but um all right if, yeah, again if you have any questions uh let, let me know the, um, uh, you know, the, the, the kind of the objective of this is all to share own experiences. So if you are following along and you're kind of at a different spot in the drawing, I'd love to hear where you're at. Um, all right. So what I'm going to do now is actually, I'm going to, I feel like we've, I, I can shift back to this, the, the blurred vision, um, uh, later, but I'm going to bring up the full one that now that changing the thumbnail below. I'm going to work with that. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to refine this. I'm going to start with a kind of a gradient along that bottom. And the, so this is going to require a little bit of um, kind of contortion. I can't get my hand under here because it's taped down, but um, it's going to require a little bit of um, kind of predictive thinking in a way and anticipation because I know this is going to get darker. Um, and so I have to kind of trust the, the materials a little bit to some degree, knowing that I can go quite a bit darker than I'm, I am right now because what's going to happen is that I'm going to, my eyes are going to adjust to this and start to visualize this as being darker than it actually is. So I'm just going to create this gradient up here. I'm not, again, I'm not worried about this edge. We're going to clean that up a little bit later. For now, I want, I want there to be kind of a sharp contrast between this horizontal background here and then that vertical edge. Um, oh, <laughs> I, see, I see JC and uh, Marina's comments there. <laughs> um, 
Uh, Nell Art is asking, when am I going to draw flowers? Um, I've got a few episodes, uh, if you look back, so this is episode, what, 84 or something. So we've got quite a few uh, episodes that are out there. Um, and, you know, we've done a rose, a lily, and some other other flowers there. So you might check those out, but I might might do another one. Next week we're drawing a truck. I'm going to do a line drawing of a pickup truck, an old one. Um, but I don't have a flower on the, on the, in the schedule at this point, but I should, I should work one in soon. So I'm just looking at this space down in here. I'm trying to evaluate first, this is the line. There's a kind of a darker strip as you're looking across the, the landscape there. You know, we see the, we see a, a, another cliff face here. You see an edge and then you move across the landscape back to this bank of clouds there. So this thin strip of dark represents the, um, that, you know, that shift across the, the ground. And it's difficult to see, there's not a lot of information, so I don't want to invent a whole lot. I'm just kind of thinking out loud here. And then as I, as we come down, we move to the cliff face, and then you can see bands of value as we, as we go move down that cliff face. And so um, it's all very, very subtle in here. And I started with kind of those horizontal marks, but those are going to get me in trouble if I if those become too dominant. So now I'm going to shift to these vertical marks. And this is an interesting um, part of the drawing um, because the you know the reference image has that area in fairly sharp focus. It's low in contrast, but fairly far, fairly sharp focus so that you can you can see a lot of the detail. Um, but I think there's there's also an opportunity here to suggest. Um, that, that landscape and just focus on the major forms rather than, rather than those details. Um, so I'm just looking at these major forms here. I'm gonna go right over this edge too. So I'm not really preserving this. We're gonna, we're gonna correct that in a bit. Um, we can get dark and I'm pushing down pretty hard right now that there's quite a bit of Quite a bit of pressure happening there. How are we doing on time? We're almost an hour in, so I want to kind of pick up the pace <laughs> a little bit. So I might let this be a little bit more, um, more suggested back there. I'm going to bring out the blending stump here, and I'm going to be drawing with that to, to try to capture some of the, the texture in the cliff. So you see, again, these horizontal bands but there's also these, these vertical shadows that you're seeing that give it some structure and form. So I'm looking at those vertical shadow, uh, shadows there, um, not spending a whole lot of time on them. But if you use the, the side of the blending stump, kind of vertically like this, and it, you're kind of, kind of scooping with the mark, um, it can create some really interesting kind of shadow shapes there. And the, the trick is to be very, really subtle with this. If you blur your vision, if you squint at this area, it just becomes this gradation. Um, but when you, when you look at it with sharp focus, you can see all of these bands um, and these, these, these shapes, and there can be a tendency to overstate that. Uh, so I, I'm trying to fight that. Um, and it's, it's helpful for me to talk out loud, <laughs> to think out loud. Um, as I, as I do this because it keeps me kind of sharply focused. These are areas that I, I have to tell myself and kind of remind myself as I'm working. Um, but you can see just by using the blending stump, it creates that, that subtle contrast where you see those thin shadows back there. I can do that on the ground plane as well. So I'm kind of just sneaking up on these forms and if it's not quite enough contrast, I can uh, I can add more material, but I think for it's we've almost got what we need just to kind of suggest that that distance landscape there, and then this this isn't really working this dark shape here.
So I don't really know, I don't know what, I don't really know what I'm doing with this right here. <laughs> it's not working right now um, because we have this, you know, relatively light, dark, light again. So these two values are the same and then you have this dark band and that's just popping that band forward. So I think I need to, um, need to adjust that. So I'm just gonna press and lift with, an, with a kneaded eraser here. Soften that, kind of target the lighter spot now. See if that reads a little bit better. And then this edge, this cliff edge here, I'm gonna darken, but I'm not gonna draw a whole line across there. I'm gonna actually kind of, I'm visualizing this path here, then placing the pencil on it and dragging down where those those shadows are. I'm gonna have to sharpen this pencil, I think. Yeah, that's working a little bit better. I think I wanna kind of sharpen this. So I'm using the, the eraser here, just really light at first. So right now it's actually, it's blending more than anything. And I'm just gonna feather this out a little bit. So I really, I need to get that, that horizon line working better than it is right now. There's too much of a glow, but it's trying to smooth that out. Take the, take the paper towel, fill that back in. That feels a little bit better. Um, there is a little bit of light striking on this distant cliff here. I wanna, and it kind of suggests that. It's kind of a cool observation that I didn't notice before. So, um, Nell Art, welcome, glad you're here. Um, the Lever Keeper, how about a fairy or leprechaun? I could certainly give it a shot. It's been a long time since I've drawn one of those, so. Um, uh, Aditya is saying, for me, it's always difficult to draw a silhouette using graphite. Um, I'd be curious to hear what, what, you know, where you get kind of tripped up in drawing a silhouette. So if you have any more information about that, um, you know, perhaps somebody here can give you some pointers, some things to think about. That's kind of the, that's the purpose of the show is to, uh, for us to get together and share our observations. Uh, so, uh, so right now what I'm doing is I'm targeting this darker band back in here and I can see the shadow shapes and I'm just darkening the shadow shapes in that darker band to create a little bit of transparency uh, between those two. And I'm trying not to think too much about what actually is happening <laughs> back there because there's, there's, there's a lot. You know, you could, you could spend hours just focusing on this one area and I don't really want to do that here, but um, I want, I want it to, to feel, you know, that it, there's a sufficient amount of um, description back there I, that you kind of have a, have a sense of that ground plane so in here, you can see that this eraser is really just picking up material. So it's just it's shiny now with the graphite. So I'm kind of using that to my advantage to kind of blend a little bit. And then if you need more, all you have to do is kind of, you know, lean in on the, the, the material a little bit more. So there's that little the river there, kind of snaking through. I don't want that to be too visible, so you kind of knock that down a little bit. And then kind of get that. I just need a little bit of that ground plane. It kind of reminds me of some, the, you kind of see the, a landscape almost like this in the behind the Mona Lisa. It, this is what it feels like, or some kind of Renaissance portrait. All right, so just kind of darken this. All right, this, I'm gonna have to shift, switch out this pencil, I think, pretty soon. 
Um, all right, so I think I need just the, I need to still resolve this a little bit more. So I'm gonna um, kind of establish using line that edge of that cliff a little bit, but I don't want it to be a hard line. You can see how I kind of broke that up, but hopefully it's enough to pop that forward so that um, you recognize that this is farther away than this. So that's the that's the tough spot. Sometimes these little areas can end up taking up a significant amount of time, but it's worth it to do it right. All right, so now I'm feeling generally pretty good about that. I think it sets the um, it sets the, the, the environment for the cliff face. This is the star of the, the drawing here. So we've got the background in the, the sky. We've got these distant uh, cliff faces here. Now we can focus on this. Um, and I, I really want to be careful along this edge because um, if I create, if it too much, if there's too much of a halo, it's really going to flatten things out. Um, I want there to be a sharp overlap. So how am I going to do that? Um, oh, and L. Art is saying, when are we going to draw flowers? I don't know when we're going to do flowers yet, but I'll, I'll see if I can work that into the rotation in the, in the coming months. So uh, I already have March planned out, um, but perhaps April, it seems like that would be appropriate to draw some flowers. So, um, and then um, there's a question here, yeah, a comment. I have a hard time finishing a drawing. It feels too hard for me. Well, hopefully this kind of inspires you to keep working on it. And I think we all can connect with that feeling to some degree. The uh, you know, finishing a drawing, knowing when it's done is always tricky. Um, all right, so what am I doing here? Thinking out loud again. Um, so this edge, you know, there, there are no lines in nature, right? So lines, when we draw them on the page are abstract symbols for an edge. Um, and they're very natural. It's very natural for us to draw a line to represent that. But I want to be careful because if I create a line and it's too heavy, it's going to flatten out the drawing. Um, so instead, what I want to do is I just want to be really light with it. And I'm going to be working back and forth between drawing the cliff and then drawing the negative space, the shape around it. Uh, so you have the positive shape and the positive space of the cliff itself. And you have the negative space, which is the space next to it, seen you know, around that. Um, so I'm going to just trying to refine this shape in here. So I've got the the full image in front of me, um, and as I kind of find that edge, you can see that I'm kind of feathering it out because I don't want there to be too dark of a halo again. That, so basically a change in value leading up to that edge, that's gonna be troublesome. And if I make it too dark, I can kind of lift up with a kneaded eraser um, and then give it another shot. So this is what requires kind of pressure control and I've shifted to this tripod grip to kind of give myself that, but I actually kind of like this, this modified overhand grip a bit more. I have that, the stability of the, of the tripod grip Um, but I can still utilize the side of the pencil more. And again, I'm just working on kind of refining this edge along in here. Here we're going to go really dark. You know, we did all that work early on, just working on the major forms and then adjusting and correcting those proportions. And because of that, now we can focus on the, the finer line work and the details um, because and we, we don't have to think about whether or not they're all going to fit together. So that's one of the, the dangers of kind of finishing as you go is like maybe doing the sky without even without considering the forms in front of it. Um, if you kind of work that way, it can be dangerous because there can be a tendency to to not want to correct or adjust if needed. So you want to work out those base, those major forms first. 
All right, so now I'm gonna to shift to this eraser and kind of draw a little bit with, with this. Um, trying to work kind of a little bit from the edge of the, the center of the form up to that edge so I don't have a, a strong line. Uh, and it's gonna feel like we're just spending a, an insane amount of time working on this edge, perhaps more than is necessary. But I think it, it, for me, that's really critical. That's a strong focal point. And um, I want to want to get that right. You can see I'm holding the the eraser exactly how I held the pencil. It helps me to really make sure that I don't forget that this is a drawing tool. You can always contribute to the form. And I think I may end up having to do some line work along this edge. But I want to see if that if those major forms are working okay first. So like right in here, for example, we can drop in a little bit of a line there. And the way I like to think about it as we're working down that form is it's kind of, it's almost like just putting together these dots, like constellations. And so you may kind of work on one area and work down below it and then kind of gradually work in towards one another rather than starting at the top and working down. And that helps to ensure uh, you know, a certain amount of line variation so that it doesn't feel too static. You know, there's some drawings where having um, strong contour lines like this, uh, you know, as we're working, these are contour lines that we're working on, but sometimes having a strong contour line can be desirable, you know, and sometimes it's not. So in this case, I don't want there to be a strong contour line. Um, Uh, Cynthia is asking, is it better or easier drawing on the Hanamula paper? I really like it. It is hard to find. Um, they sent me out some that allowed me to work on this, but I, it can be difficult to find it. Um, but in general, like a smooth drawing paper by, you know, Strathmore or Canson or something, um, if it's from a, from a known company, a good company, you should have some reasonable success. So this isn't as quite as smooth as, say, a Bristol board or vellum, but it's it's relatively smooth. So, so I'm just kind of knocking some of this down a little bit. So I'm feeling better about that edge. It's not really, it's not 100% accurate, but I think it's going to be close enough for today because we're already over an hour in. This is going to take a little while. So um, Rocket434, thank you for the comment. Um, Brenda is saying some of the hardest pictures we've done uh, really helped grow in drawing ability. That's awesome to hear. <laughs> Thank you for those comments. That's kind of what, what this is all about. These are, um, this show was really developed as a way to, you know, when we, so many of us were kind of shifting our practice to being indoors. Thought, well, let's, I, need to, I need to practice drawing. I don't draw nearly enough. Um, I'm really a landscape painter, so we kind of spun this show up and the idea is that we just, as artists, we're constantly challenging ourselves. We're giving ourselves subjects or processes um, just to continue to push our skills and develop. It's just part of the practice. Um, and uh, so hopefully, hopefully that's doing that for everybody. But it's, for me, it's definitely been the case. I could just, I've done far more drawing than I have in years. Uh, and I like the idea of coming up with a, a new subject. I mean, I haven't drawn in a long time or um, ever and I don't know, seeing what it can teach me about drawing. But the, this is all about the practice of it. You know, um, we're gonna do hundreds of drawings in our lives. And sometimes we put so much pressure on ourselves to make each drawing count that we forget that, you know, we just enjoy drawing in that, that it's, a, it's a really helpful practice in building hand-eye coordination and, um, and it really speeds up painting processes. So, um, so I'm just kind of roughing in that dark patch there. So this value that I just laid down for the most part 
is actually going to be the light on those trees. And we're going to go even darker to get those shadows in. Um, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to target the, the shadow areas here on the, on, the, on the cliff. And one of the things that um, we notice in these, these shadow shapes is that we have, it's a combination of the form shadow and the cast shadow. So if we look at this shape here, there's this larger, there's this chunk of rock here that sticks out and it's casting a shadow back in here. So you have this part being a cast shadow, this side of it actually being a form shadow. It's a shadow that's on the form of that rock, that object. Um, and then you put those together and that's the, the shadow shape. So I'm trying to focus more on that shadow shape right now. And then we're going to go in later and differentiate between the two a little bit more. We'll find a little bit more depth in that shadow. So I'm blocking that in, but I know I can also go darker later. And so right now too, you can, you can ask yourself what your tolerance is with regards to accuracy with something organic like this you know it's this natural forming you know we can be off a little bit in the proportions as opposed to say a portrait where that can be much more critical how you manage those proportions um, but i'm using the side of the pencil um, intentionally because it creates these more natural looking shadows um, and you want to remember to keep rolling the pencil in your fingers so that you you're constantly kind of, kind of rounding out the um, the material and you can get some really unique forms there rather than really trying to control it by, by using the point of the pencil and, and draw that specific shape. We're just letting the materials do the work for us. And um, it kind of creates these really nice edges that feel more like shadows than if I were to use the point of the pencil. You know, so, so pressure is a big thing, so just a very light pressure, um, you know, where it needs to be darker, you kind of lean in on it a little bit more. And I'm just focusing on those shadow shapes and we'll come back in and we'll get some of the, uh, those, those uh, striations there. Um, Yeah, Aaron is saying at this point you could turn the left side of the face. Yeah, kind of like the old man on the mountain up in New Hampshire. Yeah. And actually what I'm going to do right now is um, as I look down into this darker part of the landscape where it's all in shadow, you can see uh, the, these other shadow forms crossing into it. There's some variation within that shadow. So I'm going to look at... Um, and look at that and start dropping those shadows in uh, and then we'll we'll continue to refine this bottom area but okay, I'm just about ready to shift to a different pencil so now I'm, I'm almost trying to imagine that this whole thing was hit by light and you can see in these the darker shadow areas where there's you know, deeper shadow shapes that creep up the side of that, that face. So how's everybody doing? Everybody feeling good about your work? Hope everybody's drawing along. If you're just joining us, my name's Scott Meyer. This is Drawing Together with Artist Network. So we meet every Wednesday, 3 p.m. Eastern. And we draw together. And we do that because it's fun. And we're just trying to keep building our skills here, so. seeing this, this kind of thin shadow kind of creeping up in here. And so one of the other things that um, you might consider as you're working is that there's this um, horizontal, I mean, this vertical nature to this shadow shape here. Um, and, but as, so as I'm, as I'm moving down that vertical path, I'm holding the pencil horizontally. 
and that can create um, sometimes an effective shadow shape that doesn't feel like it's too heavily drawn and you know, it doesn't feel like it's outlined. So you're kind of visualizing the path, but then having your marks run in that in a contrary direction to that can be helpful in um, creating a shadow. So this requires a little bit of negative drawing and as we draw that shadow shape, it's also defining the light shape there. There's a kind of a shadow form here. This is this is where we have those two shadow shapes that are really similar to one another, and I want to fight that desire to essentially stamp one into the next, make them duplicates of one another. Mary B is saying, asking, could you use the blending stump to draw the edge um, along here? Is that what you're you're asking about? Is drawing that edge? Um, if that is, then yeah, you could. Um, you know, it doesn't quite have as sharp an edge, but I think it could be really helpful in there, and we'll be we'll be bringing that out. If I'm if I'm not um, thinking of your question properly, just let me know. So as I, as I do this, I want to start to think about um, kind of some of these finer kind of cracks and details in there and try to suggest them. So as you can see, I'm just using the side of the pencil. You can create really fine lines using the side of the pencil and they can often feel more natural. They have some really nice variation to them um, because I don't want to, I don't want to create heavy lines. Again, this is where you're letting the material kind of do the work for you to some degree um, and capture the spirit of the place, not necessarily 100% accurate duplication of the reference photo. And so there's, um, and I remember to squint my eyes too. I kind of like the tooth of the paper showing through because that helps to suggest texture. And so by utilizing the blending stump, we can create some contrast in, with regards to that. Um, all right, I think what I want to do actually is um, I want to work on some of the, the variations in value, those the various the lines there that move across. So, um, how do I want to do this? Let's see. You know, the first off, I want to I want to see as it you know we have we have this this vertical wall back there, but it's got texture to it, and you can see those lines kind of wrap up and around. It's not a straight line, but they're pretty close. <laughs> so um, I, I want to I want to kind of just wrap my head around the form a little bit. So if I look at this shape here, for example, it seems to kind of change shape a little bit. It's a little comes down a little bit and then it changes the plane and it starts to come up on this side. Um, so I'm just kind of going to give myself some notes uh, in various sections that help me to define the changing planes along that, that surface. So as we're moving horizontally across there, where can, where can we, um, can we, where can we change the, the subtle direction of those marks to help create that, that, um, that surface, that the volume there. And so I'm going to sort of break it apart into these various sections here. I don't want it to be one line that goes all the way across. I'm going to create a bunch of different pieces and then stitch them all together. So it might be helpful to kind of bounce around the drawing a little bit. This is when, <laughs> you know, an ADD kind of mentality is helpful, just bouncing all over the place. And I, that really, <laughs> that really helps me. Um, I, find that when I fixate on one area, I, um, I get, uh, 
to get myself into trouble. I find it better if I just keep floating around the whole drawing, bouncing from one to the next, one spot to the next. And so you can see I've got this kind of modified overhand grip. Um, it's barely using the pressure of the pencil. I've got it kind of held between these fingers and then there's the, my, my thumb and my index finger actually holding it above the paper and I can just kind of lean in on it um, and I can lean up and that gives me a little bit of uh, control over the pressure. I just like the, the I like the nature of the marks that it leaves when we when you do that. So helps suggest the detail without having to get in there and really labor on every little mark there. Uh, the other thing I'm doing, if you haven't already set up your drawing at a distance, look at it from a distance and make sure it's vertical to check your proportions, see how things are holding up. I think taking a photo of your work can be really helpful in looking at the thumbnail. Um, you just want to change the context of your work so that um, you can kind of see it f with fresh eyes. So there's this one dark band that becomes more visible. So I'm going to try to focus on that a little bit. And this is where I think, you know, the way, the way we hold the pencil can have a big impact on the drawing. Because um, I just, what I, you know, what I'm trying to kind of connect with is that, that initial reaction to the drawing when it's all kind of about the light. And we, we're not really aware of all the details in the drawing, in, in the subject. Um, and so if, if I over-render these details, that's going to be the first thing you see. It doesn't align with our, our own kind of initial reaction to this, our own um, thought process as we come to understand this subject. Um, so I'm trying to think of, like, what did I first react to? And I want that to be the thing that when I look at the drawing, that, that I react to that same thing. And then as you get into it, um, as you really study the drawing, you might become more aware of some of the subtleties um, some of the, the visual indicators that really help us understand how we recognize this for what it is. Um, all right, so I'm just, I think for the most part, I've got enough of an indication of these, these layers of rock here. Although actually, I think right up in here, I kind of like that there's kind of a clear structure to the um, uh, to those bands there. Add a little bit more to that, and then I'm just kind of when I, when I look up at the screen, and I can see how this looks. So we're from a distance. I can evaluate to see whether or not it's working, and if any of those marks feel like they're jumping off of the form, or whether they feel like they're integrated into the form, or they're part of it. Um, all right, I think what I need to do is I'm going to shift down to here a little bit. Um, of course, I just said that as I became aware of something that says, oh, I want to do that. So there's these little, little stretches in here that I want to drop in there. That happens. Like as, as I was saying, I want to work down here. I saw something in the reference. I said, oh, I got to jump on that. I need to draw that right now. There's no real reason other than it was just an impulse. I don't know if I can. Uh, it is what it is. Don't overthink it. All right, now I feel like down in here, I can start to 
um, kind of shift my thinking to the um, the rocky parts that are visible. There's some kind of finer kind of gravel areas where the trees are able to take hold. And then there are these kind of vertical sections like right in here. So I'm, I'm trying to prioritize the shape of the light and shadow, the light and the darks there. Um, and one of the things is that this pencil is getting kind of worn down, so I find myself actually scraping the paper with the wood casing of the pencil. So, you know. Um, again, if you have any questions, just let me know. If anybody's new, I want to welcome you all. And next week, we're going to be drawing a truck. It's been a long time since I've drawn one of those. There's a, an artist here in the Denver area, Paul Heaston, who's done some really amazing pen and ink drawings and you know, a lot of different media. But he's done some trucks lately that have got me thinking, I, I need, to, need to try that out. I think I need to just need to go darker with all of this. So maybe what I do actually, I need to just shift to this. This I'm going to switch to the onyx pencil, the dark. So this is equivalent to like an 8B or a 9B pencil. So it's pretty dark. Um, and I'm going to now I kind of add some of the details in this area here. And again, I find it really helpful just to use the side of the pencil create more natural looking marks. Um, my first step is to blur my vision. So I, I look at this area without any real detail um, and make sure that the values are working out okay. Um, and then I, then I shift my vision to, to bring it into focus. So it's this constant back and forth between sharp focus and blurred vision. Need to go darker. Keep going darker. And then blend this in a little bit. Knock down some of the tooth. It should darken it to some degree. Um, I'll lay on more now. I lost those shadow shapes that I had established earlier, so now I need to redefine them. Hopefully the there's no more kind of lagging or blurred kind of camera work happening again. Um, hopefully that's all resolved itself. I don't know about anybody else, but here in Colorado, it's been nice and warm and sunny after some snowy weather. So hopefully everybody's doing all right. See, give me a pencil. I take a photo. No need any camera. Awesome. Yeah, it's interesting. You know, we think about, you know, the role that art plays now, as cameras have just become, every, you know, commonplace. Everybody's got a camera now. Um, I don't know, I have my own thoughts about that, but I wonder if anybody else has some thoughts about you know, how do you. You, how, does that, how has that affected the way you think about your own art making in this age of the camera? Well, thank you for the comments there, Cynthia. I appreciate that. 
So I'm just kind of working out on that, that line here um, and trying to determine what I'm seeing here. So there's, um, there are these little, little brushes here, the little scrub brush. And I want to try to indicate, but I don't want to be over, I don't want to overload it. I need to I need to establish those shadow shapes in there. And it's interesting you when you see how dark this area gets when you can go even darker. Um, yeah, that's again, that's one of the things that it took me a long time to really kind of figure out and I'm still struggling with is is that value control, you know, in terms of creating kind of light. There's a tendency to just to overstate value contrast. So in the, the painting or drawing, make that value contrast greater than it actually is. See here, I'm gonna add a little bit more kind of detail in here. And we have these kind of vertical cliff faces down in this area. Uh, due to saying sometimes okay, no control Z is a sense of unsafety. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, that is kind of a, an interesting thing. We kind of take for granted when, you know, it'd be a, the ability to undo would <laughs> be great to do uh, in real life. Uh, so working from, you know, working with traditional media, you kind of have to, uh, you don't really have that safety net, you know, to some degree. And some media are more forgiving than others. I'd be curious too for for those of you who are new that have kind of found this. How did you find the show? Is there something that you were searching for? I like to take suggestions on subject to draw. And we've had some people talk about drawing flowers, um, but you know, with the group here, you know, if I can't answer your question, somebody else can, and that's kind of the whole point of the show. And I'd be kind of curious to see what you all might be looking for. I said how you came across it. There's so much content out there for drawing, you know. Um, but we're just trying to you know, just think about it's a great time of the day to kind of set aside all the other stuff that you've been dealing with and just focus on drawing. It can be really freeing. This is my favorite day of the week now, so when I can draw with you all. And this, you know, the way I conceive of drawing is a kind of a particular way. I guess, like I said earlier, you know, I, we started this show. Um, you know, I was using I'm using these these drawing exercises as a way to help me when I'm painting on location. It just helps speed up the my ability to get accurate proportions and values, kind of get to the heart of the composition. You know, those are all the things that drawing can really help with. But that's this is all again the exercises for me to help improve my my painting practice, but you know drawing is can be it's a finished artwork uh, if it's an art form in and of itself. So I think what I want to do is really just kind of sharpen up this edge a little bit. So switching to this overhand grip, I get a little bit can really lean in on the the pencil and get some of these darker marks. But rather than draw a line, I'm trying to just see the shapes of light and dark. Let the viewer's mind fill in some of those missing spots. Hello from Amityville. Monica R. saying I really look forward to Wednesdays. It's a chance to relax. That's awesome. I am glad to hear that. Yeah, 
drawing can be somewhat hypnotic and meditative. It kind of brings us into the space a little bit, shuts down that some of the critical parts of the mind sometimes. Sometimes it really act activates those areas. <laughs> I'm, I'm curious how many of you, like one of the things that's challenging right now is working in silence, so that's one of the reasons that I'm talking so much. Because um, usually when I work, I, I like to listen to audio books. Um, it gives my mind something to chew on, so then I can just, my, my painting self just kind of does its thing because I, I tend to overthink things in my drawing and I try to get out of my own way a bit more. So I'm kind of curious how you all work. You know, there's I've seen many people debate whether or not you listen to classical music or nothing at all, or you know, like myself, I listen to audiobooks or podcasts primarily, actually. Um, but I know in the in the silence, what happens is my brain just starts hyper focusing on every decision I make on the page, and usually that's not helpful. <laughs> so. Um, because then I'd start thinking myself and not, and uh, I don't just kind of fall into a nice, healthy practice. All right, I'm happy with that. That really helps to bring this together. I feel like this corner now needs a little bit of weight visually. A little bit more substance there. And it could just be bringing in some of these darks. And then right down in here, this little white line is bugging me along that tape. There we go, that feels better. It kind of, there was a little bit too much kind of distraction happening down in that, that bottom edge. Now again, I got, got to get back in there and redefine some of these shadows. And I think what I need to do is there's just that, that scrub line there that I need to address. I'm going to come back in with the eraser and we're almost done. Uh, let's see. Monica is saying you like to listen to music. Anybody else? Thing for me, drawing, I, I, I feel simultaneously energized and exhausted <laughs> at the end of, end of a big drawing session because uh, it requires some you know, mental focus that can be exhausting, but I also find it energizing and relaxing. It's kind of an interesting duality there. But I often find I'm actually more exhausted when I when I'm painting in silence, because again, that, that critical part of my brain is so active and it just gets exhausted. So like I said, I like to give it something to chew on by listening to a podcast or something else. So in that way, then my painting time becomes more relaxing. So I'm kind of targeting in the shadow areas now, looking at those dark stripes going a little bit darker in that shadow area to create that transparency. And this is where also we can distinguish between the form shadow and the cast shadow. In that, in that way, it'll help make those shadows you know, feel more believable. You know, one of the, one of the challenges to, to working with light and shadow is to have it read like a shadow and not a dark shape on your, your page. So it technically is a dark shape, but you want to kind of trigger something in the viewer's mind that says, no, it's a, sh it's a shadow. So that's what they see first. And that aspect of transparency um, can be really a key factor in that. So really observing where forms might pass from light into shadow and how it changes um, within the shadow shape. Anybody have any favorite podcasts? I know we're in the midst of producing season two of Artbound, Year for Artist Network. That's a fun one. 
We bring on two guests, and they talk about a subject, so we've got some exciting subjects this season. I, like so many others, are now thoroughly obsessed with true crime as a result of the availability of podcasts. <laughs> So just kind of targeting right now, again, some of the darker, kind of finer details, adding a bit of transparency to some of the shadow shapes. This is really kind of a bit of a nubbins there for the... My onyx there, I see. Sylvia, that's a great story. I'm glad you discovered us. Thank you for sharing that. Um, and Samin found us through the YouTube algorithm. That's awesome. All right, so I'm still targeting kind of darker spots here. Um, one of the great things is seeing the familiar names here. <laughs> I love seeing everybody here every week. And each week it seems like we get a new group of of people. I know it's been challenging taking art classes lately because of all the craziness in the world, but hopefully those will start to pick back up again and we'll get some in-person classes. But in the meantime, grateful that we have this technology that allows us to do this virtually. I'm just kind of targeting some of the shape of the rocks here. Again, just allowing the side of the pencil just kind of scrape across the surface and suggest the form. Um, how does that how does that land for everybody when, we, when we're using the pencil this way? Um, anybody struggle with it? Does it make sense? Because it is one that one of these. It's one of the aspects of drawing that just feels very intuitive. So it's a hard time to really kind of articulate it in a way that um, uh, that, I'm, that other people can utilize. So, so if, if you're struggling with something like that, just let me know. But like I said, a lot of it is just experimenting with the material um, to get the effects that I want. And uh, sometimes that can be hard to articulate, but. I'm just kind of looking for some of the finer cracks and details and crevices in this in this rock face. I'm trying to bounce around as much as possible so I don't get fixated on one spot. And this is where I can go back in on that, that top ridge. And I need to think about what is happening with the form there. So we have this vertical cliff and then you have a bit of an angle here and then it really slopes back this, to this horizontal plane there. So I want to keep my marks really tight along that, that top plane. I'm going to open them up a little bit here to create this, this slope. And then it just becomes more vertical as we come down there. So I'm going to try to, try to observe those shapes. Again, not to overthink them, but... Um, and you want to try to avoid the impulse to create like a, a, a consistent pattern across there as you look at these little dark spots that represent the shadows on these trees back there. I know that is a strong impulse of mine just to go bop, 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 and create this even kind of sp evenly spaced pattern of dark that, and that doesn't really happen in nature. So just changing up my marks as I focus on this, this plane here, looking, trying to observe how any of the the tree shapes might help to indicate that um, the changing plane. That gives a little bit of form to the cliff face there. I'm 
sharpen that up a little bit. I think I can sharpen this point here. Monica is saying you're lefty and it tends to be a little hard working that way. Oh, that's interesting. Um, I'll see if I can, I'm kind of curious to see if there's any other strategies that would help. I know anybody that I could work with that could help me to translate that. Yeah, I imagine it is very different working left-handed All right, I'm feeling pretty good about those values there. Um, and I really like, now that we added the darks here, how that re it really pushes this middle ground back farther. Um, so that's kind of a cool thing that's happening there. Um, if I look down in here, I feel like this should have a bit more substance to it. And then what I can do is I'm going to pull out this, my retractable eraser. And now um, I want to think about, um, I want to think about the planes first before I think about those, those layers of light and dark rock. So for example, like right in here, actually, well, I'm going to shift to the, the kneaded eraser where I can kind of press and lift um, and and kind of erase out areas where I feel like the planes are facing the, the light source a little bit more directly. And if I'm gentle enough, then what it's gonna do is gonna leave these initial marks down there. So it doesn't re necessarily remove the uh, indications of those, those rock layers, but it um, helps to establish a little bit more form and contrast in that, uh, in that light area. So we have the shadows, now we're just kind of building the lights there. And then, um, let's see. This is requiring a little bit more focus, I suppose. So with the kneaded eraser, it's just kind of lifting a little bit and then I'm reshaping it. Lifting a bit and that's starting to just give more form and texture because it's so easy to, to let this just be a flat wall because it's close to flat, but if more dimension we can give it, I think the better. I think that's close to it. And now I can use my retractable eraser and really kind of target uh, kind of these lighter spots in the rock where the light seems to be shining off it more. So it adds a little bit of detail. And then if I, so I have, as you can see with my eraser here, I've kind of carved it into this wedge that gives me the opportunity to create both a, a wide mark and a Thin one here. So I can add a little bit of detail now by drawing with the uh, with the eraser. Kind of pulling out a little bit the along that rim there. And I 
this is an opportunity to kind of distinguish the contrast a little bit here. So lighten this, this the point of the rock out a little bit more to help bring that forward. Remember, an eraser is always an opportunity to contribute to the form. It's not just a tool for correcting. I love drawing with the eraser. So if it's, it's kind of, it can be a little bit uncomfortable at first. So if you haven't really done much drawing with erasers, it's totally understandable if, if it's uncomfortable. But the more you keep at it, the, the more it'll make sense. Go. So now it's just a matter of evaluating where I need additional detail where I can sharpen up and kind of be selective with that. It doesn't have to be the same degree of finish and polish the, across the entire drawing. I'm just pulling out a little bit more light there because we have that dark background here. If I, if I kind of lean into those light areas a little bit more here, that can really pop that edge more, make that the stronger focal point. It's a little weak before, so I'm feeling better about that now. All right, so I think that's just about it. You know, I could keep kind of picking away at this, but I'm not sure if I'm really adding anything substantive to the to the drawing at this point as much as just kind of playing around with it. And so I think we'll we'll call it a day. Um, join us next week. We're going to be working on a truck, a uh, nice line drawing of this old truck, which I think is going to be a lot of fun. Um, it is, I've started working on the, the preparatory drawing and it is a challenge. So <laughs> I hope we're all kind with me next week. <laughs> uh, but uh, we will do our best. Um, I hope everybody uh, enjoyed the show and it's been drawing along. If you uh, would like to, I would love to see your drawings. Um, there's a link that I pinned at the top of the chat. It's also in the description below the video uh, where you can share your work. So I wanna thank you all. Um, see if I missed any questions I apologize um, if you have anything that you want to ask uh, quickly I'll try to hang on for a little bit um, thank you Cynthia we'll see you next week um, all right Susan thank you I'm glad you learned a lot with the tools um, I'm, ha I'm pretty happy with this you know I think there's a lot you know more we could add into these detail areas but like I said I think you've you've seen my process there and it's just a matter of continuing to go in and add an increasing number of details there but um, I think it, it captures the spirit of the place effectively so um, I'm gonna call it done all right Colleen I'm glad you enjoyed it um, Penny all right I'm glad you're finding this helpful for your work there Penny um, and thank you all. Yeah, check out Artist Network. We get a lot of resources for artists of all kinds. You know, we try to we cover you know representational and abstract work. You know, lots of different subject matter, acrylic, oils, watercolor drawing. We got a lot of resources for everybody. But this is a drawing show. Hopefully, we're going to spin up some more. But I really appreciate everybody. Thank you all for joining me, and 